Hello, everybody. God bless you and welcome to Sunday. Welcome to the first day of the week and welcome to actually the last few days of the Hebrew month Shabbat. In the, I think on Wednesday, we'll be entering into the Hebrew month Adar. Well, I wanted to come on and, and do a tribute to uh, a giant in the faith who, uh, who went home to be with the Lord. Uh, and that is Pastor Jack Hayford. Uh, he transitioned from earth to heaven on uh, January the 8th. And yesterday was his memorial service. I got to watch uh, a portion of it. Uh, it was an incredible celebration of an incredible man of God. And uh, Pastor Jack, Pastor Jack Hayford, uh, although I didn't personally know him, his uh, his footprints and his handprint uh, made an indelible an, an indelible uh, impression on my life and ministry in the '90s, and so I wanted to come and celebrate him and um, and just share with my audience uh, what Pastor Jack Hayford meant to me. Um, I first was introduced to him through some of his books. And so although he was not uh, a mentor, an intimate mentor or a mentor that I knew, he mentored me through his writings, through his wisdom. I used to read, uh, I used to get his, his weekly newsletter. Uh, also, I used to follow him in uh, Ministries Today. Um, just a lot of lot of rich wisdom uh, as I had uh, just entered into the into pastoring in 1993, and so by the time I came across Pastor Jack uh, in the uh, in the mid 90s, um, he was one of those uh, just one of those pastors uh, who I felt a connection to in the spirit, and so. Uh, as I think about him, I think about the, the books that uh, really had a lot to do with my foundation as a pastor, uh, the book that he wrote, Prayer is Invading the Impossible. And um, prayer was actually the, the uh, that was the pastoral thrust. That was the, the push on me to develop a congregation of, of praying people. And and it, it was quite successful. He, he had some incredible prayer gatherings at the church that I was at in Virginia uh, on Tuesday nights. I'll never forget the children that used to gather to pray. Many of those children are now adults who are leading uh, in churches in Virginia and North Carolina. And so there was a lot of food, but, uh, but the book Prayer is Invading the Impossible was one of those books that the Lord used in order to bring me into an understanding and the stewardship of prayer and how prayer is so effective uh, when, when it is, is used correctly. Uh, another one of, his, one of his books was, uh, uh, he did a series on Pastors of Promise. I don't know how far he got in that series, but I did I did purchase the, the first book and I leaned heavily. That was one of the books that I've read yearly. And I really um, poured the principles. I'll never forget the exposition that Pastor Jack did on Abraham out of that book, Pastors of Promise. And he talked about the faithfulness and the fruitfulness of Abraham and the promises of God. And um, and those were some some in my pastor, those were some dark days for me, but that was a that was one of those books, Pastors of Promise, pointing to character and to hope, and um, and so that was just another way that Pastor Jack mentored me, and uh, then um, some somewhere in the nineties, uh, he began to gather pastors at his church. Uh, the church in Van Nuys, uh, California, church on the way. And it was a dream 
of mine to to go to one of those gatherings. I think he was doing it three to four times a year. It was a small group of pastors. Um, I was never able to go because I couldn't afford it, but uh, that was a that was a dream of mine to actually sit in his presence for about three or four days and to just glean from his wisdom and his experience. And so, and so Pastor Jack, as I look at his legacy, he was a builder. He was really an, an apostle uh, before uh, in the 90s, the apostles were just coming forth in identity. And I know a lot of uh, a lot of denominational pastors kind of shied away from that. But when I look at Pastor Jack Hafer, I see I see the hand of an apostle and I see the hand of a father and a bridge builder and, and even his uh, ministry in Promise Keepers. Uh, I was very active in Promise Keepers, which was a, a movement of men uh, reconciling men to God. And Pastor Jack was one of the one of the keynote, he was one of the popular speakers in the Promise Keepers, but he was a bridge builder. And I think through his ministry, the Lord brought a lot of people together, different denominations and, and faith and movements. And so uh, I celebrate him. I uh, um, hate to see that he's gone, but he has left a legacy in the earth. He has left uh, a testimony in the earth of one who lived by faith, one who walked by faith. And in the 90s, I was in a traditional church that uh, that sort of shied away from the things of the spirit. And Pastor Jack was one of those fellows who was not, uh, he was not pushy. He was not arrogant in his beliefs in the spirit. And so, and so he made, he made his beliefs and his practice, he made it comfortable to, to young pastors like myself who didn't understand how Holy Spirit moved fully. I was coming into that, but I was in the 90s, I was very traditional, very fundamental and conservative and and um, and I walked in the things that the denomination I was a part of believed in. We didn't believe in speaking in tongues, praying in the spirit. We didn't believe in prophesying or prophecy. Uh, uh, we didn't believe in women in ministry. And so I I embraced those things. We didn't believe in the five gifts that Jesus gave the apostle, prophet, teacher evangelist and pastor. And so that was my belief, but the Lord was using men like Pastor Jake, Jack, Jack Hayford to bring me out of that, out of that religion, out of those religious beliefs and out of those traditional mindsets. And so he was one of the first. So when I came to know a uh, Holy Spirit in the 21st century, and I begin to move in the things of the spirit. Uh, I can look back at Pastor Jack Hayford as one of the first that spoke into my life and showed me a greater way in Jesus. So we honor his life. We honor his legacy. And we say, well done, man of God.